Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. Part 10. Refitting the buffers and modifying the spring suspension. The buffers are held into these buffer stocks in quite an unorthodox way. Normally the buffer has an extension shaft that goes through the rear of the buffer beam, but on this locomotive it uses a small slotted grub screw with the end turned down to fit in a slot in the buffer itself. I had to drill out the old grub screw, re-thread the hole, and here I'm using some nut lock to fit the grub screw in place. Notice how I wipe away the surplus very quickly with my thumb. I don't think this blue stuff dissolves paint, but some retaining compounds do. The next job is to make two more of these special grub screws. First of all, the end gets turned down to a lesser diameter. Then I clamp it in the vise and saw off the end part that I need. Being careful not to accidentally saw my finger off at the same time. The next part of the job was to clean up the sawn face on the belt sander, followed by screwing this very small part into a 4BA nut, which in turn is held in the vise. And in this clip you can clearly see that I'm cutting a slot in the top of the grub screw. For this, once again, I'm using the small hacksaw, and I'm doing it entirely by eye. Quite often in these videos, I talk about the calibrated eye, and the calibrated eye is nothing special, it's just something that is born out of many years of practice. In no time at all, I have a perfect slotted grub screw, and it looks something like this. If I had to make a lot of these, I would use a jig in a milling machine, but it's hardly worth the time and effort to just make two of them. So now, because I have enough of these, I can fit the buffers into the buffer stocks. I decided to use a different method of applying the thread lock. Originally, applying it direct from the bottle was a bit wasteful, so I applied the thread lock this way. The first of the buffer stocks needed the grub screw drilling out, but I didn't need to do the same on this buffer stock as the original grub screw came out OK. In this case, I'm using a 4BA tap just to clean the threads and remove the paint. So, with a bit of oil on the buffer and the spring fitted, it's time to push it into the stock. And in this part of the clip, I'm rotating the buffer to just spread the oil. And to finish the job, I depress the buffer slightly, holding it in the correct position, and then screw in the specially shaped grub screw. This screwdriver is magnetic, which is very, very useful for small jobs like this. Moving on now to the next buffer stock, exactly the same process. I'm using a 4BA tap first, just to clean out the thread because there really is a lot of paint in there. And once the thread was suitably clean, I fitted the buffer in exactly the same way as previously shown. First of all, I oiled the buffer, then I rotated it to spread the oil, then I held the buffer in the correct position to allow me to fit the grub screw. And before I get lots of comments about the paint, once again, I'm not responsible for this, but I will be cleaning up the overpaint that you can see on the bottom of the buffer beam. A very quick and very simple job. The next thing to tackle is the fact that the suspension is far too firm for such a small engine. A few viewers commented on the video where I was fitting these springs and said it looks like the coils are binding. Well no they're not actually, the axle box will travel its full distance. Eight heavy duty springs on such a small engine like this is too much, so I'm going to fit some lighter duty springs and see what happens. This is a piece of much lighter duty spring, so I'll cut eight pieces from this one. You can see how different they are when I compress the springs. And I'm going to fit these weaker springs to the engine just to see what happens. The difference between the compression of the original springs and these is very apparent as I'm fitting these new springs. I can press the keeper plates down just by finger pressure. Whereas when I fitted the original springs, I couldn't do it by finger pressure only. I had to use a socket driver screwdriver to depress the keeper plate. As before, I'm applying some of this thread locking compound, and you will notice that this is blue. So, blue is generally thread locking compound. If it's green, it's retainer. You do not want to use retainer on nuts at any time, because when you come to remove the nuts, they're not going to come off. When I left the house this morning, it was snowing, and I was so preoccupied with the snow, which we don't get very often in this part of the world, that I forgot to put my toolbox in the car. This is no big deal because at the Steam Workshop there are lots of tools, but it makes it much quicker when I use my own set, so I didn't have my Barco spanner, which is terrible. I can't live without this. But anyway, I found this spanner. It's old, but good. When I arrived at the Steam Workshop, I was really surprised to see Dave there. Dave spent a lot of time in hospital this weekend because he got a blood clot in one of his arms. But there he was this morning with his arm throbbing and obviously very sore, working as normal. Good on you, Dave, you made a stern stuff. I hope it gets better soon. I'm fitting the springs to the other side, as you can see here, which is a repeat process of the job that I've just done. Hence, I can talk about something else. 
I could say, and this is my right hand, and this is my left hand. But no, I would just say that it's still snowing outside and I'm getting a bit concerned as to whether I can get home. But the fact that I'm sat here now, the day after editing this video, everything is okay. Here I'm testing the suspension qualities of the axle boxes. The articulation seems fine, but I don't really think these springs are strong enough. I'm able to depress the axles too easily and too far down into the horn slots. I fitted the springs to the front axle, I didn't show this because it's exactly the same as fitting the springs to the rear axle. But once again the axle box travel is excessive with very little pressure on the wheels. So these springs are too weak. By the time the engine has the boiler, running boards and tanks and cab fitted, there would be no suspension at all. Getting the suspension dead right on a miniature steam locomotive is very important. If it isn't right, you don't get much traction. If it's too tight, the thing bounces off the track. Regarding the traction problem, you're generally okay with an 040 engine. It's when you have a locomotive with more driving wheels that you start to get a problem. I once rebuilt a 5 inch gauge Mana class locomotive, and when I first put it on the track it was terrible, it slipped all the time. And when I put a screwdriver blade underneath the wheels whilst it was on the track, I was surprised how little pressure some of the wheels were putting on the track. It was only really the centre set of wheels that were putting any weight on the track, so by careful adjustment of the suspension, coupled with adjusting how much of the weight was carried by the four front bogey wheels, the engine's performance was revolutionised and it would pull an awful lot of weight. The best solution that I finally came up with was to use one of each spring strengths in each axle box. This is fairly clearly illustrated in this clip that's on screen. I won't really know until the engine's finished whether this is going to be okay, but I think it may be. And now when I press my 19.5 stones of body weight down on the chassis, the suspension feels quite good and very even. Time will tell when I get it all back together. Over the last week or so, there's been a major reshuffle in storage of the engines at Steam Workshop. And here is a Union Pacific big boy being rolled down the workshop. This is incredible. It's just like the full size, but a lot smaller. It's a bit dusty at the moment, it wants a good clean, and this was the best shot I could get at the time, as it was positioned in a very strange place in the workshop. Time for me to move out of the way and let them all get on with moving the engines about. So thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.